My pleasure. Buenos días. Disculpe si no puedo hablar en español, pero mi español es limitado. So, entonces, voy a hacer la presentación en inglés. And uh, thank you for having invited me. me. And actually, first of all, I would say that um, this has been a kind of uh, misunderstanding with the organizer. And um, I actually didn't get the title of my presentation. So it has been introduced as a certification and standardization with respect to third countries. But actually, I, I made a much wider uh, presentation of what we are doing in, in EXO and, and how we tackle also this industrial cybersecurity. And, and part, the, the part of certification and standardization is only a small part of it. But I will, I will go through this. And um, so first of all, uh, the public-private partnership, um, a presentation of EXO and the, and the PPP, it has been created in 2016. Uh, after many years, I would say, of lobby in, the, in Brussels, we started discussing this in 2011. What we can do, we were seeing that uh, IT security in general was, was moving, it's coming up and was important, so we had a number of uh, activities with the Commission and then uh, say, okay, you have to set it up, but you don't have, you have to set it up this PPP, which is uh, the approach of the Commission focused on research, first of all. So we're going to give you some millions. Uh, for research, uh, but you have to put together everybody, every, and when I mean everybody, I really means everybody, uh, and, and uh, you have to create an association and, and, um, and prepare priorities for research for the coming years. This is what happened. Actually, it took us uh, kind of uh, four months instead of the usual one or two years to set up the organization. and. Um, we said, okay, we, we got the agreement with the Commission, 450 million on the correction side for research in four years, and on the private side, three times more. This is the, the agreement we got. But EXO, it's, uh, it's much more than the usual PPP the Commission is setting up. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a public-private <coughs> partnership per se. The partnership usually is the Commission, Commission and industry, EXO is already a public-private partnership because we have inside public administration. Public administration coming from uh, the national public administration, like in, in, in Spain we have three ministries which are part of our organization, and they are even at the board of directors. But also uh, we have regions uh, like uh, Ipuzcoa, like the Basque countries, Castilla y León in Spain. And, uh, and, and they are active cooperating with us actively cooperating with us because at the end is not what happens in Brussels, which is important, is what happens locally, regionally, nationally, because security, cyber security is a national prerogative, both as a national security and also in field like education. Education, each country decides how to deal with education and we saw, also John said, and others, and, and also I know I said that education is key today, but it's decided at national level, not in Brussels. So that's the reason why we, we have a special kind of PPP with respect to what Brussels is doing usually. We have public administration inside, at the board of director level, as I said, but also experts sending experts in our working group, which are working together with us. And this is fundamental, because what is coming out from our work is not something uh, that's simply coming from the private sector, from industry. We would like to go to the moon, to Mars, or whatever. It's something that is already, what I say, usually to say, is pre-digested. So it's something which is pre-digested in the sense that what is coming out is not a lobby, but it's already a piece of recommendation which can be already be discussed at political level by countries, by the countries or European institutions. So it's much easier to be implemented. It's not just a dream of industry or whatever. Today, we are around 236 organizations from 29 countries. You saw, you saw it. Spain actually is the leading country, yeah? so with 32 members, and uh, including, as I said, uh, the, um, the, the, the regional aspect. And actually, I have to say, I would like to come back on the regional aspect because 
When we started the idea of setting up this PVP in uh, January 2016, um, I've been approached by Brittany. Brittany is another uh, European region, which somehow, like the Basque countries, is very proud, very specific in their approach. They have somehow also their own language. And, um, and they said, we want to be a member of EXO. I was surprised. But then immediately I realized that this is the right approach. Because, as I said before, what has happened locally, what has happened regionally, is the reality, is the real market, not what is decided or happening in Brussels. And on top of that, also, you have European regional funds and you have a lot of support. So this is the regional approach is very, very important. So for this reason, we gave a specific, we set up a specific working group for regions. This is the governance of EXO. Uh, it's complex because cybersecurity is complex. And also because, a request from our members, we have to be global, comprehensive of all different aspects. So in the bottom, you see the different kind of uh, categories of members we have. The SMEs, uh, the financing bodies, the large companies or the associations. We have the regional, as I said, the regional bodies, uh, the public or private user and operators, we have national public authorities, these are more the legislation and regulation side, and the, and the research centers, centers and universities. All these are working in six different working groups. One of the, is on uh, research, which is the initial part, this is in the number six. Then we have an, a working group specific on education, training and awareness. Another one on SME in regions, because we, wanted, we have seen there is strong interaction between SMEs and activities in the regions. We have the verticals, the sectoral demand on the different areas, Industry 4.0, the first one, which is of particular of interest today, but also energy, transport, finance, e-government, health, smart uh, cities, and telecom and media. We have the number two, the working group two on investment and international cooperation, and the one on standardization and certification. One word on this point, on this working group, as it was supposed to be the title of my intervention. Um, the Commission asked us to look in particular not only on research when we started, but also on certification, because you know that September of last year, the Commission issued a communication on the Cybersecurity Act, which is dealing with the renewal of ENISA, the European uh, Agency uh, for Network Information Security, and on the certification. Certification, they wanted to, uh, to create a European framework on certification because each country have different approach. Some are more mature, some are, some are not dealing at all, simply relying on third countries. But we want to have, the Commission said, we want to have one global approach because it costs money, costs money to go, especially for SMEs, to go around Europe and having certification in different products. And uh, it will simplify, it will help in our international trade, and so on. Actually, what happened is that we set up this working group on certification, and I will tell you, it was a chaos. It was really a big, big challenge. I've never, never seen such a, a chaos. It's a positive, because uh, our life started from chaos. That's normal. And it took more than a year to, to start the dialogue. And this is was something which is very important also. When you put together public and private, beyond the theory that you can read on the internet on public-private partnership, you have to share information. It's nice. It's, let's go for, have a beer or coffee, and then we will share better information. Yes, but beyond that, you have to put together people with completely different interests, in our case. You have to put together the automotive sector, the which has certain needs because now they want to go, they want to implement the IoT, they want to go to automatic driving cars. You have to put together, for instance, the, the uh, plane manufacturer like Airbus or the defense sector or the health sector and they all have a different point of view and needs and level of maturity. And how can you find something common which is called Certification and certification is so close to the market that as soon as you say something wrong, immediately you have big companies coming on me and say, "Oh, you said something which is against my business and so on." So that was the first challenge. 
On top of that, you have the public administration. I've learned, I'm actually representing also now public administration, as I said. I have to be very careful in what I say. I, I would have liked to be <laughs> politically non-correct as you, and I could say more. But I'm actually, when I'm giving a speech today, I have to, be, I have to think. I have public administration behind me, a very strong country, because we have also UK, Spain, France, Italy, Germany, and so on, and you name them up down to Estonia, which I remember. And, and, and we have certain requirements because for them certification is very much linked to national sovereignty. And they want to keep it very close to their control. So that's another part of the story. So when you put all this together, we created a base la layer, let's say at the European level, but then we have to build, a, we, have, we, had, we have built up now, we are building actually, now sectoral views, because each sector, as, as I said, a different level of maturity, different requirements, sometimes you need to go for uh, certification, strong certification, third party certification, sometimes self-assessment, but it depends on the impact. And then of course standards, what about the standards? The standards it's something, I say, you set up certification without doing standards, right? Yes, it happens. But see, we, we, we have to create certification schemes which somehow are embedding the standards. And creating a standards, you know, takes years. And how much it takes to create a zero day exploit? Zero day. In a, well, that's what the time you see. So we are certifying today with respect to the knowledge we have today of the threat. But tomorrow the threat is different. And how much this will impact on standards? How much it will impact on certification? This is a big question. That's, that's the reason why sometimes I start my speech with, with Socrates, say, I know, all I know is that I know nothing. Because things are changing so quickly. That's in cybersecurity, that's a real challenge. So standards is nice, certification is nice, but we have to consider that we have to have the mood target is moving and also our system should be, uh, uh, should be capable to, of being flexible and, and being upgraded easily. So this is general view. You will see a lot of slides. I will leave the slides. Don't uh, learn from my way of writing slides because it's against all uh, criteria that are usually thought. But you will see, I will pick up a few, few words here and there. This is where we started in 2016. We have recognized a number of cybersecurity challenges for, a industrial, for industry in Europe, where we say the market is fragmented, we have a lot of uh, external suppliers, we, are, uh, there is, we have seen the digitalization of the society of the European industry coming up, and by the way, those who are telling you they know where to go with digitalization, they lie because nobody knows where we will be tomorrow with the introduction of IoT or industrial IoT. It will be a big, big problem we don't realize today how big it is, it will be. So, uh, and then on top of that, there is a big problem of awareness of, of understanding uh, of the investment. We lack in Europe of entrepreneurial culture. Uh, we lack of venture capital. We, we have a lot of technology startups. I was three weeks ago in San Francisco. They're the biggest show uh, in the world, 50,000 people, 50,000 people, can imagine, uh, going at this show. It's a marketing, but the technology level somehow and the messages are very similar to what we have in Europe. Simply, they sell it very much better, and they get investment. That's the reason also why European com uh, companies are going there, because they find it the way investors, and we still don't find it. And then also, so for this reason, what are the, the objectives? Okay, objectives is first of all, we have to protect infrastructure. We have to use data collection, and artificial intelligence will help us. We want to have stronger digital autonomy in Europe. We don't have to be completely dependent, especially when we go for national security with uh, external technology that uh, sometimes are not sufficiently trusted. Uh, we need to be more competitive. We really have to be more incentives for uh, um, in public-private cooperation, support the SMEs, and as I said before, also the leverage on the competence and development at local, region, and national level. 
and of course develop education, training and awareness. Where we are today, well, I would say we are still fragmented. We have started in two years a dialogue. This is important. Now, like in, like in certification, we have started this dialogue which allow us to understand better each other, find some common ground, and start building up some concrete steps, concrete objectives. What we do is not only blah, blah, shouldn't be blah, blah, is not only political message, we should go for something concrete. For this reason, at the end of this slide, you will see a list of what the different working groups are doing. But just to give an example, uh, we really try to work, especially with the regions or with our members, to set up, um, well, first of all, to bring together what they're doing on education and training, because uh, also big companies or at regional level, a lot of people are investing in education and training. But at the end, everybody on his own, there is no synergy. There is no build-up of, of competence, of real competence. And, and, uh, and the Commission said we need 350,000 experts in the next five years. We will never reach them, even if, if we would have the money, simply because there is no coordination in this approach today. So that's what we try to promote. And also a second message also here on education and training is that we are losing 50% of our chances, almost 50% of our chances, while we want to reach this goal. Because today we see that we have around 8% of women which are dealing with cybersecurity. So more or less we're losing 50% of our chances to reach that goal. So we are trying to support this, let's say, uh, to help women to come close to, 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 to cyber security. This is a common issue in all the ICT sector. <clears throat> but cyber security is a growing issue, both from political point of view, the elections, you know, the politicians are very scared now, uh, from the social societal point of view, the, the social media, the privacy, the Facebook story we saw recently, and the, from the economic point of view, Industry 4.0 and all the digitalization. It's a global, because it's not hitting only one country, one person. Each one of you could be uh, an actor of cybersecurity threat. It's sufficient that somebody is using your mobile phone, your connected device at home for a distributed denial of service, like a, boot, uh, like a, a bot, sorry, to, have, to, to use it against other devices. So it's just a machine that you don't realize, but somebody is used, against another service to destroy, to disrupt a service. So um, this is also a good reason to protect our devices. Digitalization, as I said, is, still, is a phenomenon still not well understood. Then there will be also, in the, when you look at the industry sector, there is the convergence of IT, so the uh, information technology and the OT, the operational technology, which will converge. In the past, they were completely separate, but now data, the data from the IT are controlling the mechanism of production. And more and more, they're no more separate, so they have to work together. And this should be looked in more detail in the future because there is, it could create vulnerability, but also could reduce cost for the overall um, organization in, the, in, in an industry. So risk management is still a challenge, not sufficiently well followed. CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer, are growing in the companies, but still not sufficiently heard or followed by the Board of Directors. And, um, and uh, an awareness of these people for the citizens, but also decision maker is important. I see my time is, is coming close to the end, so I would say we are now in a period, a very important period in Europe, where we are moving from uh, very fast, from a, from a first step of this European cybersecurity approach to what will be the next approach for Europe in cybersecurity, which will be an approach where we will have money. Europe is, has just proposed a budget for the period 2021-2027, not as big as we wanted, but much larger than in the past. Cybersecurity is now on top of the priorities for the European Commission. And uh, 
there will be money for more money for research, more money for supporting training. There will be more money for investments in in the different infrastructure, but be they critical or simply at manufacturing level. So this is what we are discussing to these days, and what will be, and this budget will be approved in May 2019. There will be also an evolution likely of our organization of EXO, because we want to build up from 2021 with you, this new uh, budgetary period for the commission, uh, a wider, what we call an enhanced PPP. A PPP which is uh, not only as we're doing today, looking uh, at certain aspects of the market, developing the market, but really in agreement with the Commission to go beyond research and really tackling with all of us in a more, uh, the real development of the European ecosystem. We are doing it somehow informally with EXO, but tomorrow, that's what we want to do with the Commission, with the support, economic support, with the European Parliament, and with all the stakeholders. So, for this, you will find in the slides, we have a definition of cybersecurity. We have a vision until 2027, where we want, to be, we want Europe to become a leader in cybersecurity. We give a number of objectives. This is our timeline already from the present, the short term, the medium term, and the future. As I said, the future is really to build up uh, a, a structured, uh, a, new, uh, a new enhanced governance with more money. This is the proposal from the Commission for more money. All in all, is if the detail will come up in uh, mid of June. I think the evaluation today is that we will have the Commission will put on the table something like 500, 600 million euro per year on cybersecurity, which is very small with respect to what the US are giving. But uh, it's a beginning. And also with this money, we want to leverage the private investment, which is still lacking in Europe. And this would be possible, especially when the private will realize that they have to invest on to secure the business, to secure the industry, and to secure the society, also the public sector. So, this is the digital European program. This is the link where we have all the working group which are, we have set up and where the, the working group three with the sectoral demand is really the one who is setting the needs for certification standardization, for the support to the, re, uh, to the SMEs, for the training, for the research and so on. And Industry 4.0 is one of them. And then you will find the details, all the activity of the different working groups, what has been done until now, and the objectives for the future. Thank you.